Tom, well, you're going to get a chance to pick your <laughs> greatest <laughs> Lancashire eleven. But we need to set some ground rules, first of all. Right. Players that you've seen, played with or coached. So yes. we're not going pre-war. No, no. From 1965. I started here professionally in 1965. So we'll go from 1965. OK. But no overseas players no either. Overseas. They've got to be Lancashire-produced players. Yeah. We're, we're sort of going what we did at Glamorgan, picking that yeah. all-time Glamorgan 11. So each uh, home ground that we do, we'll have a go. Um, you said 65, you were first here for the first time as a professional. You came here for the first time in 62, I reckon, just a few years before that. So we're looking at six decades of Lancashire cricket. Just before we go to the best 11, you've probably been intimately involved with two very successful teams. One as a player, early 70s, mm -hmm. lots of one-day success. Yeah. Then as a coach, yeah. mid-90s, yeah. lots of one-day success. In all that time, yeah. the club has won one county championship. Why the discrepancy? Well, going back to that time when we were a crackerjack one-day team, we had a, an ebullient chairman called Cedric Rhodes who ruled the roost. And he sort of let it be known that the money that comes in here is one-day cricket. Give it your very best one-day cricket. And we had the tools. We had a really good side. So um, I would say from a playing career, there was a real accent on one day cricket and, and if you did well in the championship fine but I vividly remember that if you did win the championship you got a very nice flag <laughs> they gave you a flag to fly and that was about it so one day cricket I'm going to put you on the spot the 1970s side against the 1990s side in one day cricket who's winning 70s side had win one days but the 90s side was a crackerjack outfit of course we had to get past Akram and so <laughs> I think that we'd probably put Clive Lloyd at both ends. <laughs> or, or Farouk. Farouk could check him on. Yeah. OK, you, your best side then. You've got to come up with some openers first of all. Right, I'm going to invite yourself to Very open. Kind. And I'd like you to captain the side, so we'll get that out of the way. Now, my candidates, I had plenty. Um, Barry Wood was one. Jeff Puller was another. Gian Mendis, who played for Lancashire, although he came from Sussex. Uh, eligible to play for England, um, but I've plumped for Graham Fowler. I opened with Graham Fowler. I thought he was a fantastic player, as brave as they come, and a great player of spin in that he got a double hundred in India uh, in the same game that Mike Gatting got a double hundred. So it's yourself and Fowler. He was a real wispy sort of player. Uh, and um, an Accrington boy. And an Accrington lad, and I think that, that your style of play and his style of play would have been perfect as an opening combination. Uh, of course, the, the one opener who would loom large, and it's earlier, going back earlier than, than your 65 onwards, but the one player who would loom large over Lancashire would be Cyril Washbrook, both as a player, captain, administrator as well. He ruled the roost, and he was what I would consider the first team manager. He was unpaid, he was a member of the committee, but he would move around wherever the team was, and, and he'd turn up unannounced and, and sort of be sat in the crowd and, and then you'd get pulled to go and sit with Mr Washbrook who would discuss your game. And in those days the committee did, yeah. you know, all powerful. Well, we were subservient to the committee very much so, we were frightened to death of them. <laughs> um, but I've got my openers. Number three. John Crawley, what a class player. Beautiful player, John Crawley, heavy scorer. John's, John Crawley, if he'd get 100, he'd get a big 100. I thought he was a wonderful touch player as well. Uh, didn't quite happen for him at international level, but at county level, I thought he was a crackerjack. The player who batted number three in your playing days, Harry Pilling, does he get close or not? Uh, Harry was wonderful. What a character. And, and sort of old Lancashire supporters of yesteryear would remember Harry batting with Clive Lloyd. So Harry had... The long about, and the short so He'd touch about five foot three, Harry. And, <laughs> and Clive was six foot five, something like that. <laughs> Harry used to look up at him. Um, he was a great character. Um, Epitomised Lancashire Cricket Club, Harry Pilling. But I'm going for John Crawley, big big scorer. And, I mean, you're being modest. You're not allowed to pick yourself. But you, you'd kind of have a sneak, wouldn't you? No, no, I'm not, no? no, I'm not remotely good enough. <laughs> Jeff Puller got in way before me. Um, I survived somehow for 19 years or 20 years. Um, but, you know, the, when you've got all the players at, at an international ground to pick from, you, you're going to offend some supporters that why haven't you picked him and so on. So 
Uh, it's a bit of a task from 1965, but there's some wonderful players. So, uh, Atherton, Fowler, Crawley, number four? Nailed on. Nailed on. Neil Fair, brother. What a player. You know, the general, we used to call him in the dressing room. He was a barrack room lawyer. Uh, he, he ran the dressing room. Fabulous player. Take the quicks on. You think he's, he's going to get absolutely nailed here, but he take the quicks on. And impish again, cheeky. He'd play all the bits and pieces shots that you see nowadays. Good runner, good scamper. He had the worst hamstrings yeah. that we've ever come across. He would turn up at any. Oh, my hamstrings are tight. My hamstrings are tight. Couldn't touch his toes at any well, stage. It's interesting career. that because he was a bit of a worrier he off worrier. the field, and yeah. I think that tension somehow got to his, you know, body or hamstrings or whatever. But you wouldn't notice that tension when he got to the middle because he just flay bowlers around. Yeah, and when he got to the middle, he, he was a little chap. He had a presence. He had a presence as he walked out down the steps and when he'd go down the steps from the pavilion there'd be a buzz around the ground because he, 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 was, he was a dasher wasn't he mm. he's not gone in there to, to play time he's gone in there to score and, and do you think in this day and age when perhaps one day cricket and one day cricketers find it easier to make that transition to test cricket do you think in a different era he'd have played a lot more test cricket he should have him? played a lot more I thought he was badly done to by England um, didn't have a night watchman in a game, he was here, very I think it was in his first Pakistan. test match, and I think that, that sort of worried him, as you said. Um, and he should have played a lot more test matches. He was a gun player for England, one day cricketing World Cups. And a great fielder. Number five, who have you got? Number five, I've gone for a, a, a lad from my era, who was captain of Lancashire Boys, fabulous player, Frank Hayes, fantastic player. He went to university and then he came here and walked straight into the team. And it, it's, it's not there now, but when the pitch was the other way around, we had a border control stand, which sort of dominated the main pitch from the second pitch, which is now like the car park and the nets. And he hit Bish and Betty twice onto the roof of the border control stand. And he held the, the bat right at the bottom and he had a long handle, a smaller blade, long handle. And again, like Neil Fairbrother, a gifted dasher. Am I right in saying he got... 100 in his first test. 106 in his debut in his test. His first match. test, but not so much thereafter. What no, happened to him? No, he, he, he had a couple of injuries, as I recall, a foot injury. Um, and he, he sort of get left by the wayside at international level. But he was one of the, at that time, he was one of the best players in England, middle order batsman. Yeah, and there is a link between Frank and a current England cricketer, Stuart Broad. What's the link? School. Um, he became a school teacher. He, the school teacher, and he's just retired, Frank. And, and incredibly, I didn't know he must have been really brainy. He got very thirsty, did Frank? He was a real <laughs> thirsty sort of lad. Um, but he taught pure physics. That's, That's right. what he did. Pure physics. Number six. Number six. It's got to be Andrew Flintoff. Uh, again, what a presence! And you'll remember when I was coach and I brought him in. Andrew Flintoff. You've got to get him in. You've got to stand him at second slip. He'll catch everything. He promptly dropped two <laughs> off Wazim, uh, but he went on to great things. And you could tell just as a, a young cricketer, he was so tall and big and lithe. He would walk into the county side and he would walk into the England team. Well, I remember you were coach then of Lancashire, probably just before you became England coach. And I remember you saying this kid is going to be absolute dynamite. And, yeah. and actually, it wasn't so obvious yeah. to me. Yeah. I mean, you could see he was going to be a good player, but I remember you saying he's going to be dynamite, and you're absolutely right. I'd followed him through under-14s and under-15s in, in schoolboy festival cricket, and he's quite a dominant player. He was so tall. Um, and I, I do remember that Warren Hegg, our wicketkeeper, who we will come to, in a game where Andrew bowled quickly with Wazim Akram and Warren came in, he said the young lad's hitting the gloves harder than Wazim, so he had real pace, his foot injury sort of pushed him back a long way, which frustrated Andrew a lot at the back end of his career, but he's nailed on at six. And balances the side as the all-rounder, mm -hmm. so who's coming seven? Um, I'm picking 12, by the way, because I want to know all conditions. At number seven, just at the minute, is Mike Watkinson who started as a medium pacer from the Bolton Leagues, uh, a very handy 
a dangerous batsman who finished up bowling off spin. Why did he finish up bowling off spin? And to work really hard to get him to bowl off spin because he thought by learning a new trade, he'd go out of the team. He didn't want to do that. He wanted to carry on with these. But he finished up bowling then into Wazim Akram's footmarks. That was so important for the team that you got Akram at one end, creating rough for Watkinson, who was a quick spinner. He mm -hmm. bowled it quickly and give it a good tweak. Big, big long fingers. Big long fingers. Good, good all-round cricketer, as yeah. you say. Um, number eight, Warren Egg. Yeah. Um, standout wicketkeeper. Standout wicketkeeper. You never noticed Warren. You just didn't notice him behind the stumps. But also a belligerent batsman. He would go out there, he'd puff his chest out and he'd play some shots. Unorthodox sort of player, could get it down to third man from anywhere. He liked a little sweep. But as a wicketkeeper, you never noticed him. And I cannot recall him dropping anything. He just took everything. We're not allowing overseas players. No. But the, the great overseas player in your era as a player here was Farouk Engineer. Brilliant. How would you uh, compare and contrast the two as wicketkeepers, Warren Hague and Farouk Engineer? Very, very close. Uh, Farouk was a showman, a real artist behind the stumps, and he'd play up to the crowd, and we got big crowds on here. And he was loved by the crowd, he was so popular. And again, Farouk would open the batting, and he, he, I think he scored 96 in a session against the West Indies over in the Caribbean. So he liked to play the hook shot. In fact, Farouk liked to play every shot in the book. <laughs> um, and so we're only picking Lancashire players, so what a yeah. heck. Got to come up with some seamers now. Where are you going? 9, 10, 11, 12. 9, 10, 11, 12. So I think there's two of them just walk into the team. And any we, team. We, we walk into <laughs> any team. So that's Jimmy Anderson for one and Brian Statham for another. So there's an opening pair. And we don't need to say anything else. And there's some other wonderful bowlers. Peter Lever, Ken Shuttleworth, Peter Lee, Ken Higgs. Fantastic bowlers, but I'm sure they would agree that these two would be the opening pair. And both of them reflect how cricket has changed in many ways. Brian Statham bowled thousands of overs here, hundreds and thousands of wickets for Lancashire. Jimmy Anderson's focus, has, he has played for Lancashire obviously quite a bit, but his focus has been very much as an England player, mm. as an England contracted player. Amazing Statham's record when you add those test matches into the fact that he played so much first-class cricket here for Lancashire. Yeah, and... And he, he had a bag and a drink and, yeah, you know... Yeah, he, he loved a, a gin and tonic and he had a cigarette and so on, um, but he was naturally fit and he would be downwind. He'd be downwind, Ken Higgs would be upwind. Um, but he, there was a similarity between Anderson and Stather. They're quite lithe. And lithe, quick enough, not rapid, quick enough but deadly accurate. And he had a different action than Jimmy Anderson and Brian Statham. I mean, he, he crossed his legs over as he got into his delivery stride, but he knew where it was going. I did it, I had he to was your it. first club captain. captain. Was, he a, was he a good club captain to have lovely. as a young man? He, was, he didn't say out. He <laughs> didn't say anything, Brian. He, he just led by example, really. And so the, those two just walk into the team. Now, the other seamer I've got is a lad who's here now. Glenn Chapel, yep. and so I'm going to either play Glenn Chapel or Mike Watkinson, de depending on conditions. If I need a balanced attack with two spinners, I'm going to play Watkinson. If I want an extra seamer, I'm going to play. Glenn it's often Chappell. said of Glenn Chapel that he, if you picked an, an eleven of the best players not to have played for England, he'd be in there. Yeah, he, he, just short of a thousand wickets for Lancashire. He's now head coach at Lancashire and a batsman as well. Dangerous, he could give it a tonk. Uh, but again, he, he, he's that sort of stay them bowler and longevity in his career. I, think, I wouldn't be surprised if he isn't still registered at Lancashire <laughs> because he was a couple of years ago he that if he got into an emergency, he could have played. And so he, he's uh, instrumental to him at 12. You need a main spinner to finish now it then, off. Now then, this is going to be really controversial. Where could I have gone? Go back to my era, it could have been David Hughes, Jack Simmons, wonderful cricketers, both of them genuine all-rounders. A lad who I signed on the motorway services, Gary, Gary Keady. Keady, who turned out to be fabulous for Lancashire, a left-arm spinner who got natural dip and spin and could change his pace. But I've gone for the fella who's playing here. I've gone for Matt Parkinson. I'm really excited by Matt Parkinson. And I'm looking at the team I've picked. We stare them 
and Anderson and Flintoff and Chapel. And I think with him in the side as a wristy leg spinner... Uh, it's a good good place to bowl leg spinner. Great here, place to bowl leg spinner. the pitch always... I mean, when Laker took his 19 wickets here in the 50s, it yeah. obviously spun. Yeah. I played on some very fast pitches here. Mm. What, what were they like in, in the 70s and Green early 80s? Green seamers. Green seamers, 60s and 70s. Uh, uh, easy to understand why. Because they were natural turf of the area. It was mm-hmm. a natural soil. And then late 60s, early, se- early 70s, they added loam. And so it would be Surrey loam, Mendip loam, to s- try and uniform the pitches around the country. So that, that loam is like a high clay content to get a bit more pace in. And so that greenness uh, started to go out of the pitch. And therefore a good place to bowl this leg is spin a because you get bounce. I mean, Shane yeah. Warne obviously loved bowling here. Yeah, um, it's a natural place for spinners. They can't stop this pitch spinning at some stage. And it tends to spin later on as, as the great game progresses. So I think Matt Parkinson, leg spin, googly, something out of the front of his hand. I think he's a shoo-in. Well, we're going to take all comers on with that 11, but what, how are we going to go on against the best Yorkshire 11 from 1965? I was frightened to death of them in <laughs> 1965. Fred Truman, Good Grief, Don Wilson, Ken Taylor, Dougie Padgett, Raymond Illingworth, Brian Close, <laughs> Geoffrey Boycott. I used to shake when I saw <laughs> this little lad. I'm 19 years old. Oh, no, they're going to hurt me. Well, lengths are going well in this game. So if I haven't beaten Yorkshire now for 10 years in a first-class game, amazingly. They've only beaten Yorkshire, or they haven't beaten Yorkshire here, has it, since 2000? Long time. Yeah, long time. Time's now. 